Here is a periodic table. The elements in the periodic table are arranged in order of increasing atomic number, that is, the number of protons in an atom. The periodic table has columns and rows. The columns are called groups. They are numbered from 1 to 8. Group 8 is also called group 0. At the IGCSEs, we don't usually count the transition metals in the list of groups. The rows are called periods. There are 7 periods. The first one is made of hydrogen and helium. If you look closely into the periodic table, there will be two numbers along with the symbol. The smaller number would be the atomic number. The other number could be the mass number of the most common isotope or the relative atomic mass. Don't worry if you don't know what relative atomic mass is. You can find out all about it in the next video. So, since it provides all this information, you can use the periodic table to find the number of neutrons, protons and electrons in an atom. Electrons are located in the shell of the atom. Each shell can hold a maximum amount of electrons. How it works is the first electrons would fill in the first shell. If there is more, they fill the second shell and so on. The first level can house a maximum of 2 electrons. The second shell has room for only 8 electrons. The third shell can house 8 electrons. This is called the electronic configuration. Calcium will be an example. Calcium has an atomic number of 20. This tells us that it has 20 protons. Since protons and electrons are equal, this means that there is 20 electrons too. So now we arrange the electrons in the shells, completing the inner ones before we move on to an outer one. So the first shell can have 2 electrons maximum. So once we put that there, there would be 8 in electrons left. If we put 8 in the next shell, there would be 10 left. If we put another 8 in the next shell, there would be two electrons left, which would fit in the fourth shell. When we draw atoms, we draw it like this, with circles to represent the shells. We can then draw dots or crosses on these circles to represent electrons. Here are a few examples. Hydrogen Helium you can work out the electronic configuration of an atom easily using the periodic table. For this, you need to know two important facts. Elements in the same group in the periodic table have the same number of electrons in the outermost shell. The number of electrons in the outermost shell is the same as the group number. And the period number gives us the number of occupied shells for that element. So, going back to our calcium example, it is in period 4, so 4 shells and in group 2, so its 4th shell has only 2 electrons. Since the first shell has to have a maximum of 2 electrons, the next 2 shells a maximum of 8 and the final shell a maximum of 2, the electronic configuration would be 2, 8, 8, 2. The elements in a group have similar chemical properties. For example, all group 1 elements react vigorously with water. All group 7 elements react with hydrogen to form similar compounds. The normal gases or the group 8 elements are almost completely unreactive. All normal gases have 8 electrons in their outermost shell, except helium, which has 2. Now you might be wondering, why are these elements unreactive? This is because their outermost shell is full. So there is no need to lose, gain or share electrons in a chemical reaction. The periodic table contains metal and non-metal elements. There are many differences between metals and non-metals. Let's take a look at them now. Metals conduct electricity, but non-metals don't, with the exception of graphite. Metals react to form base oxides such as copper oxide. But non-metal usually form acid oxides, such as carbon dioxide. Most metals are solids with high melting and boiling points. But non-metals can be solids, liquids or gases with low melting or boiling points. Well, that's all for today. 
If you preferred it instead of a vacuum the face with your textbook, then like and consider subscribing.